Hey, what's going on? We're here at week four of the nine dominant mindset shifts program All right now mentally. And the one that we're going to cover this week surrounds around visualization. It's very closely related to the law of attraction. Uh, for those of you who've never heard it, you'll, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about here in a moment. But the most basic way that I can say it is if you can visualize it, you can make it happen. You have the power to make anything happen. Anything is literally possible. That's, that's how I operate. I don't limit myself. Um, I don't, I don't, I try to stay away from as many limiting beliefs as possible. Um, I don't try to rationalize things. I try to, to visualize things, look at the steps that I need to take to make something happen. And then I get after it. Okay. So the bottom line is in, in today's week or in today's lesson, sorry for week four, we're going to talk about if you can visualize it, then you can make it happen. All right. So I'll, I'll tell you guys a, a quick story here. Uh, one of my favorites I remember I was like 17, I was watching the College World Series on ESPN in my basement. It was 2005 and I was just coming off my junior in high school. So the opportunity to play baseball in college was becoming a reality and it was happening fast. And the, the NCAA leader uh, for home runs was named Matt Laporta. He was playing for Florida that year. So Laporta's playing for Florida and they happened to be on ESPN. I'm watching it in my basement. Laporta was a redshirt sophomore and this guy absolutely mash baseballs. He actually ended up uh, making the MLB with the Indians a few years ago. He's an up and down guy. I'm not even really sure if uh, if he's still playing in the organization or, or what's got what he's got going on there. Uh, but I, I just remember sitting there on my couch and then all of a sudden just ping, you know, that just that loud ping rang out from the TV and you know, I watched you know the TVs or the, sorry the camera camera switched angles and just watched that ball uh, soar soar into the stands at Rosenblatt Stadium uh, right off the port at bat. And, you know, I just remember thinking to myself, you know, wow, how awesome would it be to hit a home run on ESPN? Like that would be literally like a, a dream come true. And, you know, as I'm even telling this story, <laughs> every time I tell the story, I get goosebumps um, writing this. And, you know, I, I just I remember I would sit there on my couch, you know, and I, I would think about being in the box wearing a random jersey. I didn't you know, I didn't know exactly who I'd be playing for and just getting a 2 old fastball right down the middle and ripping an absolute bomb on ESPN. Uh, fans going crazy, the whole thing, the whole nine yards, right? Just just your total fantasy uh, that you would want uh, playing college baseball, playing in the College World Series. Um, fans going, you know, fans just going nuts. It was it was, it was was an awesome moment. And, you know, I had, God, I mean, I don't know how many times I'd visualize this moment, probably thousands of times. Um, it, was, it was just something that I constantly thought about. Um, especially from the time I was 17, um, you know, all the way in, up until, you know, I, I mean, still, even when I got into college, um, it was just something that, you know, it was, I thought about it. It was one of my motivators, my drivers. And I always thought about this, you know, especially on a daily basis. Um, and literally after visualizing, visualizing this moment for about two years, I had the opportunity. Okay. So we were playing in a super regional against Clemson, uh, my freshman year at Mississippi State, and it was being televised on ESPN, um, and I was pumped. I remember thinking, you know, the, the day before, "Oh my God, I'm going to be on ESPN tomorrow. This is awesome!" Right? So, um, it, it was just, it was just an overwhelming. Uh, it was a cool feeling and to be able to, you know, it's not exactly like I, you know, I was the <laughs> the only person on the team, right? We did this as a team, but just the fact that this opportunity even arose. Uh, it kind of, I remember being like, man, this is what I've been thinking about for, uh, you know, the past two or three years, uh, even, you know, probably since the time that I, I was younger than that. But I specifically remember being on the couch uh, when Laporta hit that home run um, and, and thinking about that. And, uh, you know, that, that day we were, we were paying, we were playing uh, Clemson, like I said, and we were facing Daniel Moscos, who ended up, and, and our game was on a Friday. Okay, so Thursday night, Daniel Moscos. Uh, he was the number four pick in the draft. So I still remember walking up on my first at bat, my first plate appearance uh, at, against du, uh, against him, sorry, at, at Duty Noble um, in front of a, a packed crowd, right? So it was 2007 and we were in the Super Regional and there was about 15,000 people there. And that's a, that is a ton for a college baseball game. Um, and it was just absolutely electric. So I remember, you know, it, it came time for my first bat. You know, I'm walking up to the plate with my walkout song blasting, the whole deal. 
the speakers, 15,000 people screaming around me, and the number four pick on the draft, it was just waiting for me on the bump. You know, and I just remember just when I when I stepped in the box, it was, you know, this is awesome. This is just really cool. This is literally what I visualized for the last two years actually happening, um, actually taking place. And, you know, like, like we've talked about before, um, I stepped in the box knowing that my best stuff was better than his, even with his, you know, nonsense hype, draft status, number, you know, whatever happened the day before as far as where he got picked in the draft. Um, and, and I remember we got to a 1-1 count, and he left a change. He left a change high and away, and I just crushed it right back up the middle. Um, right for a single. I remember Russ Steen was on first base. Um, and, you know, I thought to myself, awesome, okay, but not a dinger. Not, not the moment I was thinking about uh, for years and years and years um, and days and days. But uh, it came time for my second at bat. So we were down. Uh, we were in need of some runs. I can't remember the, the exact score. Uh, but we needed runs to get back in the game. Um, and I remember Russ Sneed walked to lead off the inning. Um, and so there was a, a runner on first with nobody out. And I walked up to the, fl- to the plate not even thinking about a home run. So, again, walk up, walk up song, uh, blasting, right, the 15,000 people screaming, number four draft pick waiting for me on the bump again. Um, and this time, this time was a, a little bit different outcome. So he was wild the bat before, so um, I, had to, I had to take on the first pitch. So first pitch, not even close to zone. 1-0, you know, now I have taken until a strike gets on. Next pitch, same thing, 2-0. And thinking that I was still going to have uh, the take on, I stared down at Coach Polk, you know, just said, took a look, all right, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be take till a strike. And he gave me the green light. And I just remember thinking, oh, baby, all right, so um, – I stepped out. I stepped out of the box, um, and it was just it was a split second. And you know, I looked up at the scoreboard. You know, two zero count. Uh, I was on ESPN, and literally, I flashed back in that moment to sitting on the couch in my basement, thinking about this exact moment, um, and, and just being like, "This is kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> this is this is definitely a weird feeling." And um, you know, I, I rolled my neck a couple of times back and forth, uh, and got back, you know, got back focused and, and ready and, and went into the box. And, you know, I still remember that ball coming out of, uh, Daniel Moscow's hand. It was just a four seamer just right down the chute. Um, and I crushed it. It was a home run just right in the center field hitter's eye. And it was on ESPN. I still remember, you know, rounding the bases and the stadium was absolutely going bananas. Um, it, it was truly a surreal moment and something that I had visualized, uh, for years uh, to actually to have happen. And, uh, you know, I remember my dad was in the stands. Uh, that was another definitely special part of it. Um, but the funny thing was when I stepped into the box, it was like I had already done this a thousand times. So it was more of a feeling of excitement. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, I mean, it was more of a feeling, a feeling of an excitement and confidence as opposed to, you know, fear and anxiety. And literally I credit to, all the visualization uh, that I had done over the, the past couple of years, just literally thinking about that moment in time. And I had done it over and over and over and over again in my head. Uh, there was, there's been a lot of studies on um, this and, and uh, the psychology behind it. I'm, I'm not a psychologist, um, but what I can tell you is that this absolutely 100% works. And obviously, um, you know, you can't sit there and think of a situation, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, I'm going to hit a baseball 4,000 feet in one swing, right? So, I mean, that's a little bit outlandish. Or just think of every single situation uh, that you can possibly think of. And then all of a sudden, boom, magically it comes true, all right? So that's not what I'm saying. And, and part of this visualization strategy and, and part of what I did when I, I thought about, all right, I want to get on ESPN. I want to hit a home run. I want to go to the College World Series. I want to do all those things, right? And... I also, at the same time, thought about all the things that I had to do to put myself in that situation. So the hours of cage work, right? I thought about every single thing that I needed to do, the focus, the, the working out, um, uh, everything. I mean, hours and hours and hours and hours. And I mean, I dedicated my life to baseball and, and is very closely tied to this visualization strategy. In high school, uh, in college, I mean, I didn't... I, I was focused 100% on baseball, um, especially in high school. I mean, you know, my friends, I mean, 
you just don't have time um, to go and, and horse around with your friends. And, and there's a lot of decisions that you have to make uh, if you really want to have your game go to the next level. And, and below all of your values, below your family, below uh, your faith, and, and all those different things that are more important um, than, than baseball or any other sport, um, the next thing that comes is baseball. So your values up here, and then it goes baseball, and then even you know, social, anything else below that, okay? And, I mean, for me, you know, I found a way to make sure that I got all my homework done and I did it well, but I, I made sure that I got my baseball done first. And I'm not saying, and I want you to be careful if you're a high school kid watching this, I'm not saying don't do your homework. I'm saying you better do your damn homework. But uh, you also have to make sure that, that doing your homework isn't, ex isn't an excuse for not being able to get your baseball stuff done. You gotta do both. It's hard. I mean, I remember being up till uh, 12, 30, 1 o'clock sometimes on, on school nights in high school. Uh, but it's, it's not the easiest thing in the entire world, and it requires a lot of dedication and effort and determination. And if you really want to get uh, to the next level, if you want to play in college, if you want to play professionally, those are the type of habits that you need to establish as early as possible. Early as possible. Um, and again, like I said, it all goes back to um, the being able to visualize uh, every single thing that you need to do to put yourself into that situation. So, for example, for me, you know, I was putting myself into that situation um, you know, I, I visualized hours and hours of cage work. I visualized, um, you know, reading all the books that I read, especially about the, the mental side of the game. Uh, visualized listening to coaches. I mean, it might sound silly, uh, but visualizing um, doing different hitting lessons, visualizing taking my best swing, visualizing um, every single thing that you could possibly imagine that was related to me getting a college scholarship, getting on ESPN, um, and, and hitting that home run. Um, and like I said, I attribute, you know, a lot of that to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's often referred to as the law of attraction. Um, but what the law of attraction did for me is it, it kept me motivated. Um, and, and it, it also made me understand that I could make literally anything happen, uh, that I wanted to. And it, and it was a very empowering feeling. Um, and, and it keeps you on track and it keeps you dedicated. So that's why I'm, I'm just a, such a big believer in the law of attraction. Um, and, and a lot of people may believe it's kind of uh, maybe gimmicky or uh, you can't just think something up and magically have it happen. And that's not what the law of attraction is. The law of attraction, uh, visualizing, it's making something a priority in your mind and understanding that that is going to be what your focus is on, right? That's what your goal is. That's what every single thing that you're trying to do. And, and for me, hitting a home run um, on ESPN, you know, earning that college scholarship. You know, I remember I did this when I was, when I won the home run derby at Fenway Park. Uh, I remember thinking about, you know, hearing my name called on draft day. All these things are, are, are thoughts that I would literally visualize about for hours, hours and hours and hours. Okay. So the, these are all the things that kept me focused on my goals, right? These are the things that I wanted to have happen and I was going to do anything to make them happen. All right, so the reality is that literally anything is possible. All right, this isn't some sort of Adidas commercial or uh, I can't remember if I'm, I might not be using the right company, um, but it's the truth. And, you know, in my opinion, I'm, I'm a living, breathing, real example of that um, because I was just like any other kid out there with dreams of playing professional baseball. And I put in, you know, I put in the work, um, I dedicated myself. And, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of confidence and, and I, with the help of a lot of other people, but I, I, um, I put myself in a position and I earned everything that I accomplished. Um, and you know, the bottom line is if you can dream it and you can visualize about it, I'm just a firm believer that really anybody can make their dreams into a reality. So no matter how far fetched it might seem, um, or how difficult it might get, I mean, the biggest thing that I saw uh, amongst the guys who ended up turning professional, um, the guys who ended up doing well in college versus the guys who didn't is they stuck with it. They kept their confidence, especially when things weren't going their way. Uh, so the, you know, the best guys that I played with, they were over 12. They weren't blaming a coach. They weren't blaming their teammates. They weren't, uh, pissy, um, 
they weren't. They just weren't. They they were confident. They maintained their confidence. They understood that that was just part of the game. Um, and, you know, I think that's also a big separator. Um, as you continue to climb up the ladder is the guys who make it are the guys who hang in there, especially when it gets tough. Because, look, it's easy. It's so easy. I mean, you're going four for four, two home runs. That's not a hard day, right? But when you're on a, a tough streak and you still got to keep your confidence when you're when you're going 0 for 4, still got to keep your confidence. Big difference there. And you know, I, again, even when I was going through those stretches, um, I would constantly visualize, 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 and that was one of the things that I, you know helped me get out of a lot of slumps throughout my career. Um, but again, you know, the main purpose behind this week um, is. The fact that if you can if you can dream it up, you can make it happen. You have the power to do it, uh, and, I, and I can't express how how powerful of a feeling that is. Um, and especially when you put in all that work, all that dedication, and you watch it come true. So, and you know, especially uh, about halfway through this course, you know, maybe a little bit more after than that, you know, it's easy to kind of drop off um, and, and get about halfway through anything that you're doing, but. Um, I strongly, strongly urge you to continue uh, to finish every single thing you do, not just this course. Uh, this is just a good opportunity to bring that up. Finish your workouts every last rep. Finish your swings every last rep. Finish, finish, finish. Always finish everything. Very, very, very important. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's, it's going to sound like, a, a, like I'm a broken record here, but the visualization, really key. And continuing your development uh, and, and making yourself get to where you're going. So uh, what I'm going to wrap this up with is my step-by-step -step visualization strategy. So this is what you can do. Uh, and these are the steps that I would go through anytime that I'm trying to visualize making something happen. Okay, so step one is, is where are you? All right, so are you at the baseball field? Are you, are you in Yankee Stadium? Are you at your high school? I mean, these can be short-term or long-term events. Okay, so it could be literally anything. Where are you? Where are you anywhere on the planet? Okay, what are you wearing, right? If you're at your high school, you're wearing your home jersey. If you're, you know, if you're play, if your dream is playing for the Yankees, you're wearing a jersey at Yankee Stadium, right? Another thing that I would go to, step three, was, you know, what kind of bat was I using, right? Uh, four, what, what time of day is it? Okay, what's the temperature, All right? What is the setting like? Number five is what is the air smell like? Okay, so you want to get every sense that you possibly can in and really visualize Every single thing that's around you, all right, and I'm trying to do it right now, um, you, you want to visualize every single thing that's around you, right? The pitcher, when he's going to release the ball, what the ball is going to look like, uh, what the seams are going to look like, what the background is going to look like on the field, uh, what color cleats you're wearing, what color cleats the pitcher's wearing, what color jerseys the pitcher wearing. Um, every single last detail that you can possibly think of, okay? So... That, I mean, that's that's going to be my step-by-step -step visualization strategy. I've attached it in that document. Uh, that's going to be below this video. And and lastly, you're, you're always going to include what your desired result is, right? Your desired result is going to be that line drive up the middle, uh, that game-winning base hit, that home run to right center field, whatever you're looking for out of the situation, okay? And, and again, taking it away from the baseball field, you're still thinking about everything in this, in this six-step visualization strategy. So... You know, you're sitting in front of your computer hearing your name called on draft day. Maybe you're on MLB, uh, MLB TV hearing your name uh, when you're getting drafted. But uh, they're starting to do that a little bit more. Um, but everything as far as my step-by-step -step stuff, uh, that's going to go down in that document that's below this video. Okay, so really important to make sure that you understand that you have the power to do anything, to make anything happen. And I've included my step-by-step -step visualization strategy to help you get started on that. And, and it's really important, again, guys, you make sure that you're submitting all of your questions to support at deadredhitting.com so I can jump on that live call on Monday night and answer all the questions that you have. Okay, so this has been week four, uh, week four of the Nine Dominant Mindset Shifts program. And, again, whatever questions you have, make sure you submit them to support at deadredhitting.com. And until next time, keep swinging.